Hi, I'm David Seitz, and this is the video abstract for my article in Antipode, Protect Wisconsin Families, Rethinking Left Family Values in the 2011 Wisconsin Uprising. This article reflects on the proliferation of the figure of the working family in contemporary liberal and even left politics, using a recent case study from the U.S. state of Wisconsin as a departure point. To begin with, consider an image of domesticity from a U.S. political advocacy campaign from 2011. Donning a light pink cardigan, a svelte, 30-ish, conventionally attractive blonde white woman cheerfully pours orange juice to one of her identical twin sons, around age 8, dressed in matching baby blue sweaters as they enjoy um, breakfast in an, a neutral off-white kitchen. An exhortation to, quote, protect Wisconsin families, neatly framed by an outline of the U.S. state of Wisconsin's official territorial borders, shaped something like a, minute, a mitten, <laughs> is superimposed over the scene. This image has haunted me since I first caught a glimpse on social media in the winter of 2011. What struck me about it was that it was generated not by the right, but by the state's pro-labor activists. Indeed, Protect Wisconsin Families was the name of an advocacy group that emerged to protest dramatic public sector union busting, so-called right-to-work austerity measures, proposed by the state's then-governor, Republican Scott Walker, shortly after he took office in January 2011. Having grown up in Wisconsin and spent the better part of my teens engaged in LGBTQ activism there, um, much of what affected me so deeply about this working family imagery and rhetoric was that it uncannily echoed the rhetoric of local and national cultural conservatives. From 2004 to 2006, organizations including the Wisconsin Family Council um, campaigned successfully for an amendment to the state constitution banning same-sex marriage in the name of protecting the state's families. Such right-wing rhetoric from 2006 echoed loudly and uncomfortably in pro-labor rhetoric on the putative opposite side of the political spectrum. Yet the apparent dominance of the figure of the working family across mainstream political discourses um, has also led to renewed socialist, feminist, anti-racist, and queer critiques of the family, and to calls for more sustained curiosity about the geographically contingent and specific meanings and inflections of family rhetoric. In contributing the heterogeneous body of scholarly inquiry and critique, my goals in this article are um, both intellectual and political. Um, on scholarly terms, I endeavor in this case study to advance theoretical and conceptual inquiry into both the constitutive limits and emancipatory potential of the figure of the working family, and in particular the working mother, by grounding one variant of that figure in the specific material and psychical geographies of racial formation and neoliberal capitalism in Wisconsin. On political terms, and perhaps um, more indirectly, I aspire to make a modest, speculative, even polemical offering to the myriad debates um, currently raging on the broad left in and beyond the USA. We live at a moment when longed, fatigued debates, uh, wrongly pitting uh, class against identity, fierce arguments about the limits of white liberal feminism, and the distinctions between leftism and liberalism have regained intelligibility in mainstream U.S. political discourse. So it seems an especially opportune time, then, to critically reconsider the working family trope, to ask whether it can help to win a world in which public provisioning for social reproduction truly encompasses the entire public, and indeed to grapple with whether it concedes too much to the very forces of privatization it may appear to oppose.